What's up, Ranger fans? Broadway Blue Bleeder here, bringing you another episode in the Monday Musing series. Uh, this is the first one in the last two weeks, because apparently last week or the week before there wasn't enough news for me to put one out. I'm absolutely crazy. I did not think what's happened in the last two weeks was going to happen. Um, so we have a lot to go over today. I'm not really going to go over the games as much as what happened in the games. You know, I'm not really caring about the scores and the outcomes. At this point, we all know the Rangers have been eliminated from the playoffs. The last couple games of the year didn't really matter uh, score-wise, but what happened in them were very important to the shape of this team in the future. Um, before we dive into all that, I just want to say again, thank you guys so much for following me and, and watching my videos and taking the time out to send me messages. I'm loving the conversations I've been able to have with people I never thought I'd have a conversation with. Um, and the fact that there's still people out there that are listening to me after two months of doing this is still mind-blowing to me. So I do appreciate you guys so, so much. Um, I will have some more written content coming out in the future, so keep an eye out for that on the website. I do have a piece out there now if you haven't read it. Um, it's broadwaybluebleeder.com. You'll find all our videos there, our social media uh, links, and the posts that I'm going to be putting out in the future and the one that I already put out. Um, it's it's been fun it's been great and uh, i think it's only going to get better you know this off season started kind of interesting for the rangers we can say um and i think it's only going to get more interesting as this summer goes on uh, i'm not exactly talking about coaching and things like that i think the roster is going to be very different we're going to get into it in here so i don't want to go too much into it right now um, but i have been saying that the summer of new york rangers is going to be interesting to say the least i think that still continues and it might even be a little more crazy than we thought um, i think you're going to see some fan favorites get moved we have a lot of depth at certain positions and no depth at other positions so something has to be done players are going to be moved contracts are going to be moved um, and it's hopefully going to be for a good thing. Um, you know, let's let's just get into it at this point. First game we're going to talk about is the Tom Wilson incident. We all know what happened. If you don't, Wilson's just a dirtbag. No other way to say it. I'm sure everybody's seen the video a million times by now. I don't want to get too much into it. I don't think I gave my own thoughts on it. Real quick, what he did was absolutely uncalled for. Um, the fact that Wilson only got, I think it was a $5,000 uh, fine, was just mind-blowing. We were inches away from seeing a player get knocked out from a sucker punch in Buchnevich while he was on the ice being choked by Wilson. Um, and then Panarin, we almost saw a death on the ice. You know, he was inches away, a different turn of his head. It could have been ugly. And the fact that there's people out there saying, this is just a hockey scrum, is mind-boggling to me. Once Panarin's helmet came off, there's no, no reason Wilson needed to continue going after him. No reason he needed to slam his head into the ice, punch him while he's down, pick him up, and then ragdoll him again to the ground. You cannot convince me otherwise. Complete dirtbag bullshit move. And the reason it's such bullshit is because Tom Wilson isn't really that bad of a player. He doesn't need to do this. He is talented. He can score. He has a big body that's tough to move off the puck, and he can do what he needs to do. There's no reason he needs to play this dirty. There's no reason that he's been suspended multiple times that he didn't get another suspension for this. It's mind-boggling to me. Um, you know, it's it was it was nuts, and it kind of rolled this offseason to a quicker start, I think is what I'm trying to say. Um, obviously, I'm talking about the next day um, after the world basically found out that Wilson was only getting a slap on the wrist for what he did. Um, obviously, the New York Rangers put out their statement through different medias, and um, it kind of sent a shock around the NHL. You know, they called out the player's safety and uh, George Para basically saying he was unfit to be the um, director or overseer of player safety, which I completely agree with. Um, especially seeing as how the guy was a goon himself, and it's not something that needs to be in hockey anymore, those goon-type plays. Um, it was it pissed off a lot of people, and a lot of people thought it was too much that he got a $5,000 fine, which is, again, absolutely insane to me. Um, <laughs> we all kind of know now, again, obviously, what happened the day after that statement came out. Uh, breaking news from the Rangers staff, obviously, that J.D. and um, Gorton were fired. Um, it came out that it was more of a performance thing, according to Dolan, instead of anything to do with the statement or anything like that. 
I don't really agree with that whatsoever. You know, there are rumors out there saying that Gorton kind of distanced himself from the statement, um, and that when questioned about it from Dolan, sorry, uh, Dolan, I believe, found out, told JD that he had to fire Gorton. JD said no, and Dolan said, okay, then you can leave with him. I can't say that I really blame him if this is how it went down. Um, you know, you can't have your president and GM not backing the owner who just came out saying our player safety is more important than what you guys think it is. And now Gordon's going to say I had nothing to do with that. That's just not good business from either side. He had to go. I don't think JD was originally going to be let go. I think he was going to be around for a while, but you know, he kind of went against the owner's wishes as well, so he had to go. Um, I don't think it's also going to be the worst thing in the world. I think JD, or not JD, Gorton was going to be gone at some point in the near future because of the guy that's replaced both of them and Chris Jury. Uh, for those that don't know, Jury was a hot commodity for a few, for a couple seasons, especially I believe it was this one. He was asked by the Penguins to fill their GM spot um, and he turned him down. So I don't know if there was a handshake backroom deal with him and Dolan that let him know he was going to become the GM at some point of the Rangers, um, because I know he also had an offer from Florida that he turned down. So you can kind of see these pieces falling into a place as it was. And again, I don't think JD was going anywhere. It was going to be Gordon. Um, and I think it just accelerated the process. Obviously, I personally, this is just my feeling, Dolan doesn't want to... Um, kind of put a black mark on Gorton and JD so he didn't come out directly and say yeah they didn't agree with me um, because that wouldn't be looked good you know to other franchises if you're not going with what the owner's saying why should we hire you as a GM that's just my feelings on it I, I think that's why Dolan's claiming it was uh, performance based instead of the statement being that Drury's been with the organization for a while I think he has seen the ins and outs of the workings of this team I think his uh, vision of this team still lines up with what JD and Gorton had, um, and I think he's going to be able to push the same buttons that Gorton might have this offseason. Um, it might actually help him even more this offseason because he was such a hot commodity. People know him around the league, um, and it might help. Who, who knows? I don't, again, I'm just going on my own opinion, my own gut feeling. Uh, but a lot of people were very upset when Gorton was fired. Um, you know, how could they fire him in the middle of a rebuild? He's been doing great, blah, 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 blah. I did touch this um, in my blog post, like I mentioned earlier, but I will go over it here as well. Was Gorton really as good as we thought? Um, yes, he did turn around the franchise. He turned this rebuild very quickly, but he kind of got lucky along the way. You know, Kako fell in his lap with the lottery pick. Loft the next year fell into his lap with the lottery pick. Um, Panarin kind of fell into the Rangers' lap. He only wanted to really play for the Rangers. He used the Islanders, I think, as um, leverage against us. Um, and Fox. Fox didn't want to play for any other team but us. So there's four guys right there that he got on our team because they wanted to be here or he got lucky in getting them. Um, that's not even mentioning the McDonough trade, which is still looked at as a failure. Kayak the Kayak is not the player they thought he was going to be. Um, they gave up a lot and didn't get a lot in return. Most of those packages aren't even on our team anymore. Um, the Nash trade wasn't that great either to Boston in the end of his career with us. You know, we got Lingren kind of as a throw-in. Nobody really believed Lingren was going to be this good. Is he this good because of the development, or did Gorton know he would be this good? I don't think he knew he'd be this good because, like I said, no one saw Lingren being a top-paired defenseman that can shut down the opposing team's top line. Um... So, you know, he had his good and he had his bad. The Kreider extension, in hindsight, looks terrible. Um, I said it at the time that it was way too long and there's no reason for that no movement clause, which is biting us in the ass as it is. Um, yes, we didn't know we would have laugh that summer, but still, that was a long contract to give to a guy that wasn't producing as many points as he should. Um, every season, everybody says, when is the real Chris Kreider going to play? And I think we've seen him his entire career. He is not a top-line scorer. He's not going to get you 30, 40 goals a year. He has his moments where he looks like a world beater, and then he has longer stretches where he completely disappears. I think that was a major miss on Gordon's part. Um, and it's going to be hard to move him if they can at all. So, again, losing JD sucked. You know, I think he had a great vision for this team. 
but I don't think losing Gordon is going to be as critical as we really thought at the time. Um, that night, the firing of those two, of course, there was still a hockey game to be played. Um, a lot of people were wondering whether the Rangers were going to call up somebody from the AHL to take care of Wilson in this game, and there was no reason for them to do that. People are still upset they didn't. Um, they, they, they weren't going to. This isn't Mason Gerstein, who's everybody wanted to be called up. It's not his fight. How is that fair to put a kid into that situation that's never played for this team, doesn't know the guys in the locker room, and has to go up against Tom Wilson for something that he wasn't even on the team for? It just it wasn't going to happen. Yes, I know they had Barron up. Barron's not going to fight him either. It's not his fight. He did try to fight. I don't think he should have went after Oshie after everything that happened, but whatever, we'll get there. Um, but, you know... The only person I think everybody knew that was going to fight was Brendan Smith, and how that guy slept the night before, I don't know, because I don't want to fight Tom Wilson either. Um, he's an animal, and if he snaps, he could have done some serious damage. Um, I think it was great their response, though, in that puck drop, the uh, first line, or the fourth line brawl. Good for those guys for sticking up for their team. Good for Smith for going after Wilson his first time out on the ice. Smith got a couple licks in and then got his ass kicked. But you know what? It's not about winning or losing those fights. It's the fact that we're here, we're standing up for our team, and we're not pushovers. And that's what the Rangers showed that game. Um, Ryan Strom stepping up and fighting was awesome to see as well. And, you know, they took care of business. They didn't win. Didn't expect them to. But they did what they needed to do. They came out. They proved to the league we're not pushovers, you know, and we're not going to stand for it. Um, the game where the whole incident happened, I think the Rangers were missing their grit and their toughness in Lindgren and Truba. Kreider does bring some of that to the game. But, you know, it's not going to stop Wilson from doing this. We've seen it happen. Reeves has kicked his ass. He's taken care of him. And he's still going after people in the same way. Um, I, I, people just wanted to see somebody punch his face in, and it wasn't going to happen. Um, I also could have all been avoided. You know, would there have been as many fights? There might have been one or two. Smith probably would have went after somebody at some point. You know, maybe Rooney would have done something as well. But I don't think there would have been as many fights and as many penalty minutes in that game as there was. Uh, Booch obviously took um, a bad penalty, cross-checks, I forget who it was, but he cross-checked him in the face. Um, and he got a one-game suspension for it, which still blows my mind. Because... Um, that's all it would have taken to avoid this entire circus by the NHL was to suspend Wilson for a game. They decided not to. Why? Because they wanted their ratings to go up. It was the last game the Rangers had on NBC Sports. And it was, you know, it was the headlines going into the game. So there was no way, for, for no reason, no, in their mind, no reason they should have suspended Wilson. No reason, like I said, um, in the NHL's mind, they should have suspended him. Again, player safety is a joke. If they wanted this, they got it. They got exactly what they wanted, and it was a fucking circus. Um, it, it, it could have been ugly for numerous players. Luckily, there was no real long-term injuries from that game. Um, Wilson had an upper body injury I call bullshit. He was just going to be targeted, I think, the rest of the game, and they just didn't want to see him get hurt. <sighs> Whatever. Um... Flipping forward and back, I guess, speaking of Wilson Smith, I'm saying it again, and I'm going to say it until it doesn't happen. Brendan Smith would be a phenomenal seventh D-man on this team next year. He bleeds Rangers blue. He loves this team. He's very well respected in the locker room. You know, yes, he's not as good as some of the kids we have or going to have, but it's going to be a very young team again. And I think having Brendan Smith as that 7th D who can step in and play maybe 40 games in case of an injury or, or underperformance, whatever it may be, um, I think he would be perfect. He would be a great fit. He has to realize he's not going to get as many minutes. His contract is going to be pretty small. But he's come out and said he loves New York, he loves playing here, and he wants to stay. So throw him a bone. I, I really think you can't go wrong with being have him, excuse me, having him be the 7th D man next year. Um... It's just an option, you know, I know the Rangers are looking for a veteran D-man. I don't really know why when you have the perfect one on your team already, but, you know, we'll see what they do on that case. Um, the next game after the massacre against Washington versus Washington, whatever you want to say, was uh, against Boston. <laughs> uh, nobody showed up that game. Wasn't expecting anybody to show up that game. They were emotionally drained. They were physically drained. They are mentally drained, you name it, they were outmatched, outnumbered, they, they, you know, they were missing most of their guys. Panarin was out for the season because of the issue with Wilson. Um, 
Booch was suspended for the game. You know, they just they had basically their Hartford team playing against Boston, and they got their asses handed to them. Completely understandable. I wasn't mad, wasn't happy. It was whatever at that point. Rangers were already eliminated, so it didn't matter. Their answer to that game was great to see. Always good to see the team go out with the win. Um, don't think anybody really saw them coming and beating the Bruins in that final game. But it was really great to see the team come together and win a game. You know, when it didn't matter, but it matters to the team. It's totally different going into the offseason with a loss versus a win. Some of the guys hit milestone goals and points, whatever you want to name it. You know, there was a reason for some of them to play. Um, and the other reason was to beat the Bruins. To show the league that, you know, we're not stepping down and we're going to be here for a while. And I think they did that. I think that was a really, really good um, response. Um, which leads us into the other breaking news that happened this past week, which was obviously the firing of Quinn. Um, a lot of people had been calling all season for Quinn to be fired, and it finally happened. Um, whether this was planned on for the end of the year, if Gordon and JD were still there, no one's ever going to know. Um, but it's kind of hard for Dolan to sit there and say that the president and GM were fired due to the Rangers underachieving and then keeping their coach who was coaching them to their underachieving. I still call bullshit. The Rangers didn't underachieve. Um, the fact that they were fighting for a playoff spot with three games left was better than I think anybody else would have expected from them this year, given what happened to the team this year with Mika being basically MIA for half the season, Putin putting out that hit on Panarin, Igor's non-contact injury, COVID, Kako getting COVID, Hedl getting hurt. I, yes, there's injuries to every team. There was COVID issues to every team. But this team was young, very, very young. They were the youngest team in the league up until the trade deadline when the Devils became the youngest, and they still were pushing for a playoff spot. It's it's hard to say they underachieved. Um, their defense was light years better than it was last year. Whether that's um, Jacques Martin or not doesn't matter. They were still better. You know, yes, the offense could have done a lot better. There was a lot of games where the offense didn't really show up. Um, the top guys kind of were invisible at times. But overall, I wouldn't say it was an underachieving season. I would say it was better than expected, but not the greatest. Um, you know, and that's where the whole arguments of grit and fighting and goonish and all that crap came up, um, which we'll get to in a little bit. But, you know, it, it was tough to keep Quinn around when you're claiming the reason, again, that your president and GM were fired were because of an unsuccessful season. Um, so everybody kind of saw it coming. The writing was on the wall. I would have been more shocked if he wasn't fired, to be honest. Um, it was justified. Like I'm saying, you know, every reason behind it had to have been justified. Um, but he didn't get fired because he did anything wrong. Again, he has made most of these young guys much better players. I keep using him as an example, and I'm going to, because I still think he's going to have a breakout season next year. You can mark it down in your calendars that I set it on this date. Capo Caco is a completely different player than he was last year. He looked lost at times. He was bumped off the puck too easily. He didn't use his body. He didn't use his frame. didn't use his skating. You name it, he wasn't doing it. He was borderline bust by a lot of people last year. Um, and he came out this year probably the Rangers' best 200-foot player. Maybe it was Booch and him and Booch tied, but they looked phenomenal. Um, you can't deny there was no, you know, there, that there was development in Kako's game this year. Yes, the offensive numbers weren't great. Those will come in time. He was also playing on the third line a lot with subpar um, teammates on that line. Uh, but you saw once he was elevated and once Laugh was even elevated, their games got much, much better. Um, so it's going to be interesting next year where they start. I think you're going to see Kako on the second line. Laugh's probably going to be on the first line. <laughs> There's going to be a trade. I'm not going to break any news right now. Not that I have solid news, but I have theories. Um, you know, but he, Quinn, definitely developed this team. Lindgren looks better. Fox looks world beater. Um, you know, Booch is a completely different player. Like I mentioned, Kako and Laugh. Ryan Strom's had career years under Quinn. Even with Panarin being out this year, he still looked great. Um, Mika's had his best two years as a player in the last two years under Quinn. And Panarin's looked even better than he was in Columbus. Um, so the people out there that say Quinn didn't develop his players is absolute bullshit. You know, again, it could be the defense got better because of Jacques Martin, but Quinn was still there, and Quinn still 
took these kids under his wing and developed them. Um, but he was never going to be the coach that led us to a Stanley Cup. I honestly think he would have had one more year next year if he didn't make the playoffs or even the second round, I might say. He probably was getting let go, but it wasn't due to a lack of coaching, I don't think. Um, I think, again, it was just situational. I think everybody kind of knew Quinn wasn't going to be the coach that led us to the Stanley Cup. He was here for the first part of the rebuild. That rebuild has been done. It's being accelerated at this point, and he had to go. So he's gone. Um, you know, they want a coach now that has a winning pedigree. Um, somebody that's been here, done that. They don't want a new guy. They don't want somebody under the radar or a college coach. They want somebody that's been on a team and knows how to win. We're going to get into some of those coaches at the end of this video. I didn't want to break it up too much right now. Um, but there are coaches out there the Rangers are looking at. Gerard Gallant is one of them. As you know, he's already been interviewed, and apparently it went well. Um, changes they need to make this offseason are going to be very, very interesting, like I mentioned earlier. Um, I do, a lot of people have been fighting me. I don't know how the money's going to work. I, it's not really my job to understand. There are ways to make it work. I do think a trade that you might see is Chris Kreider. But he has a no-movement clause. Yes, I'm well fucking aware of that. It's a no-movement clause on the player's behalf. If the player decides to waive it, guess what? He's being fucking traded. There is a team out there who doesn't really have a roster at this point. There are trades that have happened in the expansion draft. Maybe Chris Kreider becomes a trade. Maybe he goes to Seattle to be their veteran you know, leadership to be their captain for the first season and lead a young team, hopefully to the playoffs like the the uh, Golden Knights did. You know, I, I don't think Kreider is a top six player on this team. I think he could be on other teams, but this team is too has too much talent on the wings to keep him on the first or second line. Um, you know, we saw at the end of the year he was demoted to the third and fourth line. His power play time, I think, should have decreased as well, but that didn't happen. Um, but he's just not as effective as a player with the talent we have on this team anymore. And again, that's another reason why that no movement clause and that length of contract that Gordon gave him was so bad. Um, I, I do think that's going to be one of the shocking moves we see this year. I think there are a list of untouchable players on the Rangers, and I think that list is very short. Um, basically, Fox, Loff, Igor and probably Lindgren at this point. Um, you know, if unless you're getting Connor McDavid for them, I don't think they're moving. Uh, I think if Kako, Miller, one of those type Booch, crafts off, they might be involved in a trade as that last piece sweetener. If it's somebody big, we'll see. I, I hope they don't give up on Kako this easily. I really don't want to see Booch moved either. Um, but if we can bring in a big name player that's going to help this team get over the hump, then so be it. I know there's a lot of rumors out there about Barkov. Um, Eichel obviously is the hot topic in New York. I would love to have him personally. We'll see how the money fits. I still think they can keep him and uh, Zibanejad depending on who they give up, which would make this team a lot better. Um, the one thing they are missing, as I mentioned earlier, is that grit and that toughness. But a lot of people are getting that grit and toughness confused with players like a Wilson or a Reeves or a Matt Martin or somebody that's just a fighter. Well, you know, Reeves, maybe Tom Wilson isn't, but Reeves is just a fighter. He doesn't bring much offense. It's not a player we need on this team. Would it surprise me? Not really, but it's not, you don't use those guys in the NHL anymore. You can't have a guy on the fourth line that doesn't know how to hold a stick but can punch somebody's lights out. It just doesn't work. You need somebody that can bring something to that line besides his fighting skills um, and I think a lot of people get that confused with grit and toughness Rangers need bodies that don't get bumped off the puck so easily they have a very small core of guys Mika's not a big guy Panarin's not big by any means Strom is not big Laf isn't big Booch isn't big they can get bumped off the puck they need somebody that can take the puck deep and bounce off bodies you know be physical but not a fighter and i think that's where a lot of people are getting confused um somebody i would like to see which is probably not going to happen is matthew kachuk he would be a great fit for this team because he brings that edge that 
physicality to the game that the Rangers sorely, sorely lack. I think Kapokako can be that guy eventually. He's got a big body. He's tough to move off the puck as it is. Like I mentioned earlier as well, Morgan Barron's on this team. Barring anything unforeseen, I think he's going to be on this team next year as well. He's a very big body that's hard to bump off the puck as we've seen in his game since he's come up to the NHL. Um, I think they do need a number one center, a number one A, one B center, whatever you want to say, like I mentioned with Eichel. Um, you know, I don't think an offer sheet is going to happen. Larry Brooks had mentioned on um, Blue Shirts Breakaway that the one reason he doesn't see a Ranger team doing any kind of offer sheet, and it kind of makes sense, is once some of our young core gets to the point where they get offer sheeted, there's going to be a ton of requests coming in because it's it's just something that the NHL doesn't do, and I don't understand why. Um, you know, for those that don't know what an offer sheet is, and the best example would be uh, Matthew Barzell last year. He was a restricted free agent where you can attempt to sign him. You give him an offer sheet if you know he accepts. Then his original team has the chance to match or better that contract. If they don't, typically you give up draft picks. The Rangers don't need draft picks right now. They have the talent in place. They have the depth in place. They don't need, you know, a pick for someone that's an unknown. So what they would do in that sense, if the Islanders didn't sign Barzell to a contract, the Rangers would have gave them three first round picks for the next three years. So 2022, 2023, 2024 first round picks go to the Islanders. Matthew Barzell comes to the Rangers on the contract they offered him. That's something the Rangers could do, and it's would be plausible to do because again they don't need draft picks they need players but it's just not something i see happening um so it's going to have to be via signing or big trades and again teams know we have depth they're going to want more players and we're going to want to give up somebody's going to be moved that we're not going to be happy about hopefully it makes the team better that's all we can really ask for right you know i did mention eichel uh, there are stories coming out that at last year's trade deadline, or at some point last year, Gordon reached out to Buffalo about Eichel um, and was basically told the package starts with Lafcaco in a first. Gordon hung up, rightfully so. Um, you know, a lot of people are thinking maybe now that jury's in charge, that that's not going to be the, the case anymore. I think it's even more likely that jury makes a, a poll like that. Hopefully he doesn't get fleeced as, you know, a new GM. I don't think he is. I think he's knowledgeable of this team and where this team could be with the current core. Um, I think they could win with their current core. I think if they made a couple signings, it would make this team a little bit different. But they still need that top flight player. You know, imagine Eichel, Panarin, and Zibanejad with Kako and Laf. Those, how do you stop them? It would be phenomenal to watch. Um, so I think it will happen. Hopefully they don't get, give up anything too, too big. Um, and I think it's more likely now that Dolan came out and said, you know, this team needs to win now, that they're going to make some kind of trade. Um, hopefully the other big thing that's going to get done this offseason, I don't think it will until some other chips fall. Hopefully the Rangers can get some kind of an extension with Fox done. Um, Adam Fox is legit. He's going to be a legit player in this league for a long time to come, barring injuries, knock on wood. Um, and he needs to be a cornerstone of this team. If the Rangers can lock him up this offseason before he becomes an unrestricted free agent, that would be phenomenal. Um, but I think you're going to have to see Cal Marker get his pay first uh, before Fox signs anything. Unless the Rangers blow him away with a good deal, I don't think you're going to see a signing until maybe, uh, maybe not till next offseason when he's actually, you know, a free agent. Um, we'll see where that goes. Uh, the other big thing a lot of people are still complaining about is the fact that the Rangers haven't had a captain in four years. I think I believe it's four seasons uh, since McDonough was traded. I think you're going to see that change. I've alluded to it before on this video. Uh, but, you know, the Rangers definitely became a different team when Jacob Truba got hurt in the Islanders game. Um, they didn't look the same. They didn't have that punch to them. They didn't have that defensive snarl, basically. Um, and I think there's a reason. I think a lot of the players on this team respond well to Truba. I think they respect him. Um, and I think he's going to be your next Rangers captain. I also think at some point Lindgren will be an alternate, as he should be. Um, but I also think having named a captain is kind of blown out of proportion. It doesn't really change the way somebody plays. I mean, mentally it does because it, it, it's a lot. It's a lot to take on as captain of the New York Rangers especially. Um, 
but Truba's has always been a leader in that locker room, especially with the young guys on defense. He's like I said, he's well respected around the league as well. He's upped his game. He was, you know, able to let Miller play his game as a rookie um, and still save his ass on uh, on occasions. He lays hits. He's physical. He's tough. He's grit. He's everything you want in a captain. So I, I'm going on record now. Jacob Truba is the next New York Rangers captain. I don't know for how long, but he will be the captain. Other big news along the defensive front that happened uh, since the last video, Ryan Lindgren did sign a new contract. I believe it's a three by three, uh, which is huge and a great, 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 great deal for the New York Rangers. Lindgren's going to be here locked up. Like I mentioned before, he's pretty much as close to an untouchable as you can get at this point. Him and Fox are going to be the top pair line for years and years to come. Injuries, you got to knock on wood, whatever. Um, it, it was a great deal, and it was a great start to the offseason. There's a couple more pieces the Rangers are going to have to think about going forward, depending on who they make trades with or trades for. Um, Contract-wise, the Benajad's contract is up next year. A lot of these young guys are going to need extensions eventually. So the Rangers, yes, they have a lot of cap space going into this offseason, but it's going to be eaten up quickly down the road. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how this team evolves and gets molded into the championship caliber team we know it can be. Um, I touched on it before. Overall, this season I think was a success. Um, success, sorry. You know the Rangers, like I said, they developed the way they were supposed to. I think we could have seen some better things on offense, but I think that'll change with a new coach coming in this year. Um, and you know, it's the sky's the limit for this team. It really is. Um, Tampa Bay Lightning are fucking cheaters. Just want to point that out. Uh, they're, they're just fucking cheaters. Fuck them. Um, again, guys, I really appreciate everything that's been going on. I'm thinking about doing a giveaway for um, YouTube. I think when I hit 100 subscribers, I will be raffling or giving away a New York Rangers autographed puck. I do have a plethora to choose from over here. So if we can get those, those subscriptions up, that would be fantastic. Let your friends know. You know, anybody that gets to the, once we hit that 100 subscriber spot, we'll figure out how to do a giveaway. I know I kind of want to thank you guys for, for hanging with me and listening to me. Um, so that would be great. Like I said, share with your friends, share with your family. Check out the website. It's the easiest way to find all of our social media connections, uh, broadwaybluebleeder.com. Uh, this week's sin bin, or last two weeks sin bin, goes to the NHL Department of Player Safety. Don't think we need to touch on that much more than that because they're fucking morons for letting Wilson still continue to play. Really pisses me off that he had a goal and assist last night in the playoffs, which he should be fucking suspended for, but we all know the story is not changing there. Um, Going to bring something new this offseason. Kind of want to do some prospects to watch for the New York Rangers, whether it's going to be in a trade or somebody that could potentially make the team. Uh, the first guy I want to talk about, I did mention earlier, but it is Morgan Barron. Um, he's a rugged winger. He could play center. He's got great physicality. He's not going to bring a lot, a lot of offense to the team. I think he's more of a third or fourth line center. Um, but he's going to be able to bring that big body mentality that the Rangers need. We'll plop him in front of the goalie on a power play. It's going to be hard to see around him. He's, I think he's going to make the team, barring anything spectacular happening to him or via trade. Um, another piece that we should look at, he's, I think, more of a trade piece than a lot of people are thinking is uh, Nils Lundqvist. He has been phenomenal overseas this year. You know, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pressure on him when he comes to the Rangers. He's been hyped up as a huge prospect. Um, I don't think he's going to be here if a big trade happens. I think he's going to be a piece that gets moved. Like I said earlier, the Rangers had a lot, a lot of depth at defense. He's not going to be a third-line pair. Um, unless somebody moves ahead of him, I don't know. But he's another prospect to watch. Um, Will Culley from... Hartford, he's a six foot three, two hundred five pound winger. Um, will definitely be a power forward again. It's another guy that's going to bring that rugged mentality to the team. He's a big physical body. Net presence is going to be great. He's somebody that can definitely make the team. Uh, he's got a great shot too, which is awesome, especially for a guy his size. The other guy I wanted to mention, he's been on the team for I think twenty games already. Is Vitaly Kravtsov. We know what he brings to the table. I think he might be another trade chip um, for the future if Kreider doesn't get moved. He's going to have a hard time finding a spot on this team as well. So those are four big guys that I kind of think will be pieces either to sell off to gain uh, bigger pieces for the team or, you know, those third, fourth line, third pair of defensive that are key to championship-style teams. Um, 
So the last thing I wanted to mention, I mentioned it earlier, uh, the Rangers do have certain candidates in mind for the open coaching position. Just want to run through a couple of the guys that I think they may look at and what they could bring to the table. Uh, first guy is Bruce Brujeau. Boudreau, sorry. Um, he didn't coach this year after being fired by Minnesota last year. He was the 2007-2008 Jack Adams Award um, recipient for the best coach in the league. But his biggest knock is that he can't win the big game. He's been unable to get past the conference finals as his tenure as coach. Um, but he does have somewhat of a winning pedigree, which is, again, why the Rangers would be looking at someone like him. Uh, the next pick is Ger uh, Gerard Gallant. Like I mentioned earlier, the Rangers have already interviewed him. The interview went well. They grabbed him before he was able to get on a plane to go to the... Um, uh, oh my god, I'm having a mind blank. I believe it's in Sweden. The um, Junior World Championship. Um, so they were able to interview him before he left. He was the coach for the Golden Knights in their first year, brought them to the Stanley Cup Finals, which is awesome. That is that winning mentality that the Rangers are sorely lacking at this point. Um, you know, he's had a couple stops. They've all been short. He seems to get let go in the third year of his contract for whatever reason, so that is you know something to worry about. Uh, but his style is what the Rangers are looking for. It's hard and fast, that's what she said. Um, and, you know, they get pucks to the net. It's, he, he can coach young guys, obviously, as evidenced by his bringing the first year in existence Golden Knights to the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, he can get the best out of his team. So that's one of the reasons why that he's being so strongly considered. Uh, next guy on this list is Claude Julien. Uh, he was a Jack Adams Award winner in 2008-2009. Stanley Cup coach for Boston Bruins in the 11-12 season. Uh, 667 career wins with Boston was five seasons with Montreal. He was let go uh, from Montreal after 18 games this season. So a guy that obviously has that winning pedigree, he's won a cup in the past, um, and he knows how to coach players. He's another guy that they're obviously going to look at. A name being thrown around by a lot of people is not Block. I don't think he's going to be in contention for a head coaching spot. I think he could potentially be on the bench for the Rangers um, in the future or this season, but just not his coach. Maybe he's the offensive game coordinator or whatever you want to call him. Um, but I don't I don't think he's going to be looked at as a head coach because he doesn't have that experience that the Rangers are looking for at this point. Um, Patrick Waugh is another name that's been going around. He was the Avs coach for three years, won the Jack Adams Award in his first season in 2013-2014. Um, but after that, he missed the playoffs two straight years and resigned. Um, he is kind of psychotic. I don't know if I really want him on the Rangers. I don't know, you know, if his three years are going to be enough to actually have him in serious contention. Um, another big name going around is Rick Tockett. I mentioned him in my last emergency video. Um, he did a solid job as the Arizona head coach. <laughs> Not a lot of talent on that team. He was able to bring them to the playoffs um, in one year, but other than that, he didn't do much there. Um, he, he does have a lot of toughness that he brings to teams. He was a tough player when he was playing in the NHL, um, but his teams always lack offense, and that's something that the Rangers have always lacked, at least for the past 10 years, it seems. Um, so I don't, I don't think he's as high on the list as others think. And that brings me to the last one. John Tortorella. No. No. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. <laughs> I appreciate, again, all all you guys have done for me. I really love doing this. Um, we're going to have some fun this offseason. Buckle in, strap up. It's going to be an interesting offseason. And hopefully it leads to a cup down the road in the very, very near future. Until next time, guys. Thank you.